Hello to our Everlee and Greenbank community. My name is Kate from Spring Mountain Honey and I'll be bringing our online beehive information session to you at home today. Please watch all the way through as at the end there'll be a special task for the kids to perform. So yeah, today you can see we're talking about the honeybee. Here are our hives here and they are the type that we like to use. So how do bees create honey? Well, they fly out of that hive and they go and visit 50 to 100 flowers. So flowers on big tall trees to your little flowering things like gerbers and lavender and basil, um, even grass seeds and weeds. They collect from those flowers pollen and nectar. Now it's the nectar that they turn into honey. How do they do that? Well, they have these little straw-like things on their face, the proboticus and it sucks up the nectar from that flower. At that stage, it's about 90% water content. So, it goes into their honey stomach, they visit those 50 to 100 flowers and they fly back into their hive. When they get inside the hive, they pass out of that honey stomach to another bee, that nectar. And they keep doing that in the hive until it's down to about 20% water content. And then what they do is they store it inside their honeycomb. So inside the hive there is frames like this and they'll draw that out and have little hexagon shapes that they store the honey in and then at that point they get their little wings and they beat it as fast as they can to get the water content down to between 15 to 18 percent and then you have ripe honey and that is ready for the bees to eat and for beekeepers to take the honey out to eat as well. So I said before they also collect pollen when they're visiting those flowers. So what do you think they collect pollen for? Well that's what they feed the baby bees. So the baby bees, uh, they kind of make, they make a bee bread. So they mix a bit of the pollen with a bit of the honey and that's what makes them grow. But to get a queen bee, it's a bit different. They only get fed royal jelly. It's this white substance and they make a larger cell than what they would for the worker female bees and they just feed her the royal jelly until it's capped off and then she emerges as a queen. Now in a beehive we have lots and lots of females. They are the worker bees as well as the queen she is also a female. So the worker bees they have many jobs through their lives so when they first emerge out of that cell they will have the job of cleaning that cell. So kind of like cleaning their own bedroom I guess, they clean that out and then they become nurse bees. So what do nurse bees do? Well they feed all the other little white grubs they are, the larvae. They feed them until they get capped off and then other jobs is bees that go out and collect the nectar or collect the pollen or collect water. There's bees that are called guard bees, they sit at the front of the hive protecting the hive. There's other bees that um, are scout bees, so if they've got to go find new things or a new home. So what happens when we get too many bees? Because inside one hive, there could be 80,000 bees. That's a lot of bees. And when they get overcrowded, they get a bit cranky as well. And they go, hey, we need to split and make a new hive somewhere. So they'll create a bigger cell and they create that queen in there. And before she hatches out, the old queen will take half of the bees from that hive and they'll swarm. Now, I don't know if you've ever seen a swarm. It is pretty amazing. They swirl around making this really loud buzzing sound and then they land somewhere. Usually it's in a tree. I've seen them on the wall of people's houses, on a fence, sometimes on a clothesline. And they hang down in like a big beard shape. And from there, they'll send out scout bees looking for a new home. That new home could be a hollow of a tree. It could be in your home, which isn't always the best. We don't want bees living in the walls of our house, do we? So if you see a swarm, it's important to contact a beekeeper. Most beekeepers are happy to come and collect a swarm of bees that's hanging somewhere easy for them to get at. Uh, however, if they've already made their new home in the wall of your house, um, I can't do that, so it takes a bit more of an expert because I usually have to cut out bricks or walls to be able to get to them but there's people out there that also will do that. Now 
with the bees. If you go to your garden and go to some flowers, you'll probably see them buzzing around. You see the golden honey bees, that's the ones I'm talking about. You might see little tiny black ones. That's the Australian native bees and they don't tend to create too much honey. Um, there's blue banded bees and teddy bear bees and resin bees. Australia has so many native bees as well. Um, so yeah, get out in your garden, have a look, but don't go touching them. Most of the Australian ones won't sting you, but there are a couple that will, but the honey bee will. So enjoy it from a distance. It's fascinating watching them collect their pollen and their nectar. Now, what else do bees create? Well, I think that's it. But they pollinate, don't they? They pollinate our flowers. Now, why might that be really important? Because I tell you, it is really important because most of the food that we eat has had a bee visit it to pollinate it. So what pollinating does is it takes some of the pollen from that flower and then as they fly to the next flower, because remember they're visiting 50 to 100 flowers in that one visit, they're taking pollen to the next flower. And that allows that flower to set on seed, to fruit, and then it falls to the ground and then that plant grows again. Or it sets on a fruit that we're able to eat. So bees are very important for our whole world to have and look after for that purpose alone. So remember that next time you're out and you see the bees. Now as a beekeeper, how do I get the honey? Well, okay. I can't show you out in the open because it will attract robber bees and stuff. So I'll switch over to my extracting room now and I'll show you. Here is a beautiful capped frame of honey the bees have done for us. So to be able to extract that, I'm going to use this tool here to scratch the top off. Now this part by beekeepers is done different depending on everyone's setup and what they prefer to do. I don't like to use heat, so I used to use like a heating plane, but I no longer do that. I prefer to not use heat to keep all the quality that the, bee, that the honey has without being heated. Now this could be a bit hard doing this one-handed so I might not look the way I usually do when I do this. feels a bit different looking through a, a camera with one hand and doing this with the other. So yeah, I wouldn't usually look so awkward because um, I'd have both hands to be able to do what I need to do. So you can see there, by breaking the tops of that wax comb off, allows the honey to come out. So then, I turn it around and I've also got to do the other side. Get it in there with my one-handed. Look at that, you can already hear the honey and the wax starting to go to the bottom. Alright, so. So once you've got your two frames of honey in there, you start spinning and you just want to start slowly, otherwise you can have a blowout which means the honeycomb breaks away from the frame and you just end up with a mess instead. But as you get honey out, you can get faster and faster, so you get the last bits of those honeys out. So you can see on the edge there, from spinning the honey spins out onto the edge and then it runs down to the bottom and then we can get it out. banana that I put on toast and put some honey over top. On my yogurt you can use it in cooking instead of sugar. Um, there are so many uses but there's also the bees wax that we get out of it when we take the honey. I've got a few things here I can show you. So in the sun the wax gets nice and soft. So this nice and cleaned wax that I've cleaned after I've taken out the beehive is used to make beeswax wraps. Now they 
are made from 100% cotton material and you melt the wax over top of it and then you can use that been out in the sun so you can see how soft it is now so you use the heat of your hand in your house to make it pliable you can use it to cover things like a block of cheese in your fridge that you've already sliced a bit off to keep it from drying out you can use it to uh, cut up avocado or tomato or you can use it to cover your sandwich in a lunchbox or you cut up apple in your lunchbox they're great because they're washable and reusable so they are better for the environment some other things that we do with our beeswax too and I'll grab them so oh, we can make candles then the candles are just made from a wick and a beeswax so there's one I've done in a tin there's one where I've used the foundation and rolled it into a, a pillow shape we can make soap Oh, and it smells so divine too. So my mum makes the soap. So there's beeswax and you can put the honey in there with the soap as well. So lip balm. You can make lip balm as well. That's just got the beeswax with coconut oil in it. And very moisturising, especially coming into winter. And then we get... From our hive as well as the honey we can get the honeycomb what tools as a beekeeper do you need well you will need a smoker so here's a well-used smoker uh, inside it you can put things like I love to use sugarcane mulch because it's Actually quite a nice smell, a bit of a multi smell. Um, cardboard or le dried leaves on the ground. And you light it up and then the puffing pushes air through it and keeps that flame going for you as well as pushes the smoke up and out through the top. So when you light the smoker, you want the flame at the bottom and you put it in. And then you want to puff it because you want to get the flames going well and once it's all nicely lit inside you can close it up and then you've got your smoker another important tool is the hive tool this tool is great for getting inside your bee box as a bee stick it down really well so you put it in the lid I'll show you how that's used later helps you break the, um, the stickiness that they use inside the hive to glue their frames and everything down and then a hive tool gripper sorry a frame gripper so that mm -hmm. just goes on top of your frame in your hive mm -hmm. goes on there and grips and you can pull it out easy without squashing too many bees and, and you know it's hard sometimes to get your fingers in there so it's easier to do it that way and then we also have gloves because trust me, it hurts being stung. As a beekeeper, even though I'm wearing all this, I will still get stung. So, that's another thing about being stung by a bee. You know when they sting you, they die. Because what happens is, fly along, land on you, put their stinger in you. It's got little barbs on it, so when they pull, it rips the stinger out of their body. And the stinger gets stuck in there, pumping the poison into you, and then they die. So what you need to do is you get it and you pull it out the way it went in so you get the barb out and it doesn't keep pumping the poison in you. So the quicker you can do that the better as well. And I like to put a bit of honey on it or aloe vera from your garden. They both seem to help quite nicely. So the queen can live three to four years. But the worker bees, they only live you know, a couple, three, four months and then they die. So the drone, he's the only male bee in the hive. He doesn't have to work, he just eats the honey. But I tell you what, when times are tough, he gets kicked out of that hive because they haven't got enough honey for him to be eating, especially if he's not making any. So it's not particularly 
the best being the male in a beehive. Uh, Alright, so I've got one glove on, put my other glove on, and I put my veil on. And we want to make sure all of our zips are done up. You don't want any sneaky bees getting in. We want to have our boots on. Smoker. Frame gripper. Hive tool. It's still going. Oh, it's still going. Wonderful. Now let's go in and see what it looks like inside the bee hole. We crack the lid with our hive tool and we give a little bit of puff of the smoke in there. We open up the hive. So in this top box of the hive is where they put the honey. So in this hive we are using the tools to lift the frame out and you can see this frame the bees have started drawing the comb out and storing honey in. You can see some bees there busy putting the honey in there. A couple little cells already capped off. We'll put that one back down in there gently. Use our hive tool and frame gripper to release the next frame up gently. This one here has got capped honey but we won't lift it out too far in case we squish some bees because it's a bit of a tight fit without pulling other frames. This hive here is one just with the brood box and we're pulling it out and you see it's covered with lots of bees. At the top, the white is the capped honey and underneath that's where they are putting in the honey that's not ready to be capped yet. You can uh, see the bees busy doing their thing there so the female worker bees put that one in gently leaving room to pull the next frame out without causing any damage to the bees or the honey this frame here has got some really nice capped off bees so that's after their little larvae grubs they get capped over before they emerge out as a bee so there you are you can see that and see the bees doing a little bit of a waggle dance as well and then we've got a drone here that I'm pointing out. That's the male bee in the hive. In amongst all the girls. And then in here, we have got cells that have little baby eggs in there. Probably a bit hard to catch on the camera then. But later on, I'll, I'll show you a close-up of what they look like. Oh, and look here, we've got a bee emerging from the cell. A female worker bee chewing its way out and then cute little bee bums as they've got their heads buried in the cell, putting their honey in and other bees feeding other bees. Another one with its head down, busy working. And then we've got, you can see the pollen on that one. And then we've got another frame with just mostly drawn, waxed, not too much honey in it just yet. And the bees busy on there. That is a queen cell with a little larvae, queen larvae with royal jelly and then that's two queen cells capped off once they've been fed the royal jelly before they hatch and that's another queen cell, nice big and long compared to the other cells and that's a queen, that's what she looks like so she's got the big shiny head, a bit like a crown and a nice big long body with no stripes that's the cell after she's hatched and that's a, another queen, a different one to before see she's a bit darker so she's a different type of honeybee. There's a few different um, types of honeybees. You've got the golden Italian, the Caucasian. And then around here, you got, um, see, she's surrounded by her female workers looking after her. And then nice, good long shot of her. I take it you can all see her there. Big shiny spot on her. So here we have cells with tiny little larvae on it with the little royal jelly and then these are the cells with the bigger larvae in before they get capped. So, so here you can see we've got a hive with 
a box at the bottom and a box on the top and over there it's got three boxes so in the bottom box is where the queen can lay and it's got a queen excluder between it and the next box this is what the queen excluder looks like here so that guys will be going on these boxes before we put their honey super on so these are only one box at the moment as uh, there were swarm of bees that I've collected and they're still growing to the size before they need, need that extra box. You don't want to be putting extra boxes on until they need it because too much room is not good for them. So why have I got one that's got th three boxes all up? Because as the bees grow and they get good numbers and they run out of room, if you put that extra box on, it gives them more room again. And I really love using this kind of system because what it means is there's always honey and a lot of honey in there because you're only taking one box at a time um, but you do need to keep an eye on it if the bee numbers drop you need to remove that extra box that is on there have a look at these bees today hey humming away enjoying the weather that we have you can see the bees there sitting at the front entrance some are greeting bees as they come in some are bringing pollen in some of them are fanning their wings over this side over here. They are fanning their wings because they're trying to get a bit of airflow happening through their hive. Sometimes you'll see some do a dance, so letting the other bees know where they can go and get water or pollen and nectar. They're quite fascinating. I enjoy often just sitting and watching the bees come and go. Fair bit of pollen of different colours coming in now. Another drone walking around. Oh, look at all the different coloured pollens. The pollen they can they collect can be all those different colours. Now this I was talking about earlier, the swarms. Look at the size of this swarm. I've got a few different pictures I'll show you here of swarms I've collected over the years. That's another one in a tree. This next one was under a tin roof. See them all piled up in under there. This next one was hanging in a branch of a tree. They were that heavy, it kind of snapped the branch down there. And this next one here is up in a tree again. And this next one was the only one that I've done from a wall and I'm never going to do it again. It was hard work. But look, they've set up their home inside a wall. This was our very first swarm at home when we got beehives. So I guess some other questions that you might have is, how can I help bees in my everyday life? Well, the biggest thing I like to suggest to people is uh, planting flowering plants. You know, just nice, simple, easy ones to go. Um, I find things like gerberas the bees love and they're very easy to grow and pretty drought tolerant. Um, things like basil, they love the flowers that come on your basil plants and lavenders, you know any of those garden flowering things they love. And also if you're on acreage you know your big spotted gums and your iron barks they love those trees too so if it's safe and you can keep those trees around um, a lot of animals are better off for it. Now our bees also um, can get diseases. So as a beekeeper, it's our job to um, check our beehives for that regularly. We actually have to by biosecurity laws. Um, but also you can help by not leaving any honey, whether it's honey you've bought from the shop or from a beekeeper, out where uh, the bees can get it. So why can't you leave the honey out for the bees to get? Well, it's the honey that usually carries the worst of the diseases bees can get. So there's one that's called American Fowl Brew, and the spores live in the honey. So if uh, a beekeeper didn't know that they had it, and they'd sold that honey to a honey packer, so you know the stuff that's sold at the shops, or a backyard beekeeper, uh, and they didn't know their hive had it, then those spores are in the honey, and if the bees come and get to that honey, they take it back to the hive, and then they've got it and that's the death sentence for that hive. Basically as a beekeeper, if we find that in our hives, we have to kill every single bee and then choose to either burn to destroy our equipment, the boxes and the frames, or have it sent off to get irradiated at Sterry Tech. 
uh, which costs a fair bit of money as well. So we can all do our part in looking after our bees. So a lot of people find interesting as well is how we make the foundations that we put into our frames to put back in the hives. Um, so the wax that we take off when we take the honey, we keep that, we clean it, and then I'll show you um, what we do to make those foundations. So this here is how I make the foundations that I put in the frames to go in the beehive. So here I am dipping a piece of timber into a hot 100% pure beeswax. You dip it a few times to give a nice coating of wax and then you plunge it into some water, soapy water, so it comes off easy. It slides off the board and then it's ready to take out and then put through my foundation roller. You put it in there and then you just roll it through and it imprints that hexagon shape that the bees use and it's just to help keep it all nice and neat in the hive. To have the opportunity to win this honey pack, submit a drawing of a bee or a photo of a bee from your yard in the comments section. What has our honey pack got in it? It's got three beeswax wraps, a kilo of our raw delicious honey and 500 grams of the honeycomb, a face cream, handmade soap, a lip balm, two beeswax candles and a wooden honey dipper. So if you want to be in the chance to win this awesome prize pack, then go out and get drawing or taking pictures from bees in your garden and make sure you submit them in the comments. Now, if you have any questions that you would like to ask me, either from what I have spoken about or maybe something that I haven't covered that you would like to know, feel free to send me a message uh, you know, through Facebook or via email. Um, Spring Mountain Honey, you can find us and I'm more than happy to help you out and answer those questions. Thank you. Thank you to Everly, Mervac and Enriching Communities. It has been fun being with you all today online. I hope you have had enjoyed our time together and stay safe. Bye.